Welcome back to the shop, everyone. Today's video is 2023 week two, which is January 9th to January 15th. So we are going to kick this off by unboxing our brand new speedometer. So all of the gauges in my car are Holly. Uh, they operate on CAN bus. The only terrible thing is that Holly does not offer a kilometer an hour speedometer. They only offer mile per hour. Uh, so I was not able to get the speedometer directly from Holly. Uh, so I found out who manufactures their their gauges, and it's a company called Speed Hut. So I went to Speed Hut's website, and you know I picked out everything that I wanted. Um, unfortunately, the bezel and the pointer are slightly different than all my Holly gauges. So I may end up needing to swap that out just so all my gauges are identical because it, you know, if I'm driving and I notice that the one gauge is slightly different, I might not be able to accept that, but we'll see. Um, once I get the car up and running, I can decide if I need to change it out just for the aesthetics or not. Uh, as you can kind of see in, in the shot right here, the pointer for the speedometer is just much brighter. Um, the bezel is slightly different. So, yeah, it is what it is. Um, now we've gone through that. We're going to open up a box, uh, I think from ProWire USA. Yep, so this is uh, a bunch of new wiring. If I recall correctly, this is all 22 gauge. And this is for my uh, heater wiring. So this is gonna go from the main control on my classic auto air brain box all the way out to the heater valve in the car. So I'm just gonna go through, start unwrapping some of this stuff. Yeah, so this is my first time getting this uh, Tefzel wire. Um, I got it from ProWire USA. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just comparing the 22 gauge that I got from ProWire to the 22 gauge I got from Pico. And yeah, so the sheathing on the Tefzel wire is so much more thin. Uh, super thin, super flexible, uh, but the wire diameter, like the, the conductor itself is the same size. So what, what I just did is I grabbed the blue 22 gauge, I took it in the car, I got a rough measurement, and now what I'm doing is I am, um, you know, unbundling all of the new wire that I got, and then I am getting the five wires that I need for the heater valve all sorted out. So it's uh, blue, yellow, white, brown, and green, I think, is the same colors that are in the stock wiring. So I'm using uh, the same colors kind of everywhere that I can. I mean, of course, I could make all of the wires the same color. I could make all of the wires brown. And, you know, there would be no functional difference as far as the wiring is concerned. Uh, but I just like to have things the same on both ends. So coming out of the main block, it's all color coordinated. Going to the heater valve, it's all color coordinated. That's just things that I like to do. Now that I got the five wires, got the length, um, I'm gonna have to tape these all up. But before I continue cleaning this all up, since the whole socket's in the way, I am going to very quickly uh, pull the uh, whole saw out of the bench and uh, put it away, just so it's out of the way nice clean bench to work on. I can easily um, tape up these wires. Although it looks like before I wire those up, I am actually going to crimp the ends onto them. And so uh, I got these ends from, I think it was mauser.ca. And these are uh, Molex ends. Um, I can link the parts in the description, although may wait for an instructional video I don't know um, yeah 
I'm doing, I'm setting up for an instructional video, so I'll probably link the parts in the instructional video when it comes out. Yeah, so I'm gonna go through, crimp all five of those wires, and then I will tape them up afterwards. like I'm actually gonna be kind of lazy here I'm not gonna tape all of the wires up individually uh, looks like I'm just gonna throw them straight into loom uh, yeah I don't know why I did that usually I tape up the wires um, but I guess I decided since it's going into loom might as well just do that
Now that all of the wires are in the loom, we can throw a little bit of heat shrink on there and make it so that they are permanently installed. And I have made labels uh, to put on the wires so that I know which connector goes to what part. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I like labeling my wires. Um, yeah. So I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to place this uh, main box. Um, you know, this is the main brains of the heating system. It needs to be near the controls. It needs to be near the heater box. It needs to be near the heater or the water valve, I should say. So having this right at the front of the car is the ideal placement for it. Um, you know, ideally, I would have rather to have it, you know, on like the real or the the panel in the back. Um, but the one connector going into the actual um, uh, heater box, like I would have to cut that and splice that, which I, I just didn't really want to do. Um, I like that it comes right off the box, right into the units. So I'm going to put it up at the front of the car. It also, it's just hidden that way, kind of clean it out of the way when the dash is in. And what I'm doing right now is I'm wiring in the ground wire that comes off the control box, goes into uh, something on the main heater box, and then it leaves the main heater box to turn the uh, AC compressor on. So this wire uh, used to be pre-terminated. It was blue. It was kind of short. Um, so now I'm just running my own. So it looks like I have shelved that project for the moment for some reason. I am now wondering what to do. So in a fit of I need to do something, I'm just throwing bolts back into the pro charger bracket, throwing the, the spacers and the nuts on it so I don't lose anything. And I have now put that away. All right, so now that we've had that little break, we are going to remove the box, heater box from the car and we're actually gonna start mounting the uh, the brain box. Uh, I put it to his side and I realized I need to just put it in the car, get installed, so let's go ahead and do that. What I'm doing is I am just uh, opening up this box, throwing it under there because I know I'm going to need to drill through the aluminum plate and I don't want to drill directly into my bench. So I put a little uh, cardboard backer underneath it so I don't drill right through. Uh, I'm going to grab my drill, a center punch, and um, just punch it for drilling, drill it out, mount it, and it looks like we have carburetor in the shop this for a little bit. So what I'm doing right there is uh, I have my tap and die set out and I'm uh, selecting the appropriate drill bit so that I can um, 
tap the holes out after I drill them. That way uh, I can mount this box in there with like a regular fastener. tap the holes Yeah, I quickly put a few tools away that are not needed anymore. Finding the correct screwdriver for tightening those fasteners. And we can put the whole thing back in the car and start running some of the wires. So it's kind of at this point, I realized that I probably shouldn't have loomed all of those wires. And the reason being, um, all of those heater wires are gonna run with all of the, um, like, um, ignition coil wires. So by having that loomed, I'm going to also re-loom every, like, the entire bundle at the end so I think it was kind of at this point in time where I thought to myself I am NOT going to put any other wires in loom until the entire thing is done so what I'm doing now is I'm just opening a new tool I got this is um, actually a tool typically used in building um, like model railroads uh, it's called the chopper uh, what I got this for was um, cutting up heat shrink tubing and making it all the same length and making it a nice straight cut. So as you can see, it's just super, super easy to cut up um, heat shrink tubing, get it all to the same size. It's a straight cut, it's not angled. Um, yeah, it's not the cheap, it wasn't super cheap, but you know what, for my OCD and the way I, I like to do things, it was, uh, it was good. Now that we have that out of the way, what we're going to do is I'm going to figure out what thread pitch uh, this bulk, uh, this airflow bulkhead connector needs. As I mentioned before, the studs that come with it are just too short, so I need to buy ones that are longer. I think I ended up getting studs that are 1024, even though the thread pitch is actually, I think, 316, 24 is what they sent back to me. 
Yeah, so um, it's actually 316 to 24, but 1024 is pretty much the exact same size and works just fine. So I end, that's, um, yeah, what I ended up find, finding worked for me. Uh, those are, you can see I got some like 1024 stainless screws there. Um, yeah, it worked. All right, so now that I've got all that stuff figured out, I can order the parts that I need for the bulkhead connector. I am going to get back into wiring the gauges. So I made this little cardboard uh, template a while back and I I don't remember if I have already done a CAD drawing on it or not, um, but that is what I'm gonna have all of the um, terminal strips for the connectors for the gauges sit on. I'm just trying to make sure I'm gonna have enough space. I'm not gonna interfere with any of the um, like heater vents or anything like that because I need to work that in there too. So that kind of answers my question. Looks like I did already do the CAD drawing or actually this is a new uh, clip so I probably took the cardboard and went off camera and did the CAD drawing and now I'm just cutting it out to make sure that my CAD drawing matches uh, what I want in the car. If I recall correctly, I did have to modify it a bunch because not, none of the uh, Fox body dashes straight, it's all angled and kind of odd um, so I do think I had to modify and tweak it a little bit but what I'm gonna do is those are the terminal strips there that I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna have uh, one ground uh, and then two positive um, the first positive is just gonna be a straight plus 12 volt uh, and that's going to come from the fuse box and then the second positive is going to be for illumination so when i pull the dash light or the headlight switch out one click that will uh, power up all of the lights on the gauges what i'm doing here is i'm just getting the majority of the wiring kind of um, tied together and clean and nice. So that I believe is the speedometer uh, instructions because it's got this little, you know, electrical box with it, which uh, is an inverter, I, I believe. Uh, I forgot exactly what it is. I have to go look at the instructions. And then it's got some other wiring. So before you get too deep into this stuff, it's kind of good to know what wires you need.
marking where I think these are going to go. And then of course I am changing my mind and wanting it to be a bit different. Um, have my race car and why I'm doing that is because I want to um, figure out exactly which gauge is which and label them all um, so I have 10 gauges so I want to number these 1 through 10 um, just that way when I'm doing the wiring in the terminal I'm hitting um, or I'm, I'm wiring them all in the exact same place so that way if I have an issue with gauge three, I know that it's gonna be in position three on, on one of the three uh, terminal strips. Um, and I gotta say, I was so fucking ecstatic when I started going through this, seeing those gauges light up and how they look. Oh, it's so fucking beautiful, man. I hope I can finish at least one project this year since I've got like eight on the go. And I really want to finish like the dash wiring and just kind of get that tested because I think that would be super, super nice. Technically to fire up the car, I don't need any of the gauges. Um, I can connect to the dominator with a laptop and you know check all of the gauges uh, fuel pressure and oil pressure and all of the important things so strictly speaking none of the gauges are required uh, but I, I would like them there because damn it they are nice. All right, what I'm doing here is I'm just taping the wires down to the dash. So that way when I start uh, wiring up the terminal strips, the wires don't kind of move and go all over the place. And that way the length of the wires is, is the same for um, all of the wiring under the dash. So we are about to start the wiring process. I am using a number eight ring, uh, 18 to 22 gauge terminal. And uh, what I'm gonna do is put a couple terminals onto the terminals, or yeah, put a couple of the ring terminals onto the terminal strip. And then I can kind of um, move the wires in place over the terminal, cut it, strip it, crimp it, repeat 30 times. Uh, or in this case, like 21 times because I don't have enough ring terminals to finish. So I'm gonna get to a point here uh, where I just have to stop half done because I just don't have the materials. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, enjoy the wiring.
it was uh, sometime right around here. I'm working on this and I'm thinking to myself, this is great, this is going good. Uh, but I think it's time to pull my head out of my ass and give you guys a better angle so that you can actually see what I'm working on. So there you are. Here is what we are actually working on. It's not just the side of the dash, but it is actually uh, terminal strips in the middle of the dash. So um, I hope to do better more and more and more because as I said, like reviewing these videos, I realized, God, this is just such a terrible angle and I am horrible for what I've done to you guys.
So after all that messing around, I finally decide decided uh, I don't need the dash on the bench to wire this. It's just in the way. It's kind of a pain in the ass. So let's get it off the bench. Let's just throw it in the corner and I can uh, get back to working on all of the terminal strips just on the bench without it. I have like my CAD layouts. So I'm okay to move forward. Uh, what I was looking at, looking for right there is I lost one of the screws somewhere and I'm not sure where it went, but I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll find one later and you know, I can just keep on keeping on for now. So yeah, so I'm just gonna continue working on this without the dash in the way and uh, you'll get to see how I'm wiring this.
mentioned before, uh, I did run out of terminals, so I can't continue on and finish that off. So I'm just going to move on. I'm going to open some uh, boxes that I got and go through some parts. So I ordered a bunch of uh, Deutsch connectors and uh, Deutsch connector kits, I should say, uh, some heat shrink. Um, looks like I ordered a few ter just terminals as well. Yeah, so this is some 12 gauge wire that I bought and it's crazy how much thinner the jacket is on the on the newer Tefzel wire that I bought, and and just how more how much more flexible it is as well. I kind of showed you there um, by comparing that uh, pink Pico to the black Tefzel that I got. They're both 12 gauge, and the Tefzel is just so much more flexible. Uh, it's one of those things where had I known about it. Uh, a long time ago, I probably would have stocked my entire rack with that instead of the Pico. But, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the Pico. It's wire. It'll work. Um, I just, I, I like the Tefzel a little bit better. Um, Price-wise, it's actually fairly similar in price. Um, I buy it in US dollars, and when it's all converted to Canadian, it's about the same as the Pico stuff. Uh, it just takes like a week to get here, uh, which is the only downfall if I need it right away. Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm just going through my connectors, reorganizing the bins, and uh, just putting uh, a bunch of stuff away. stuff away I can finish up this um, fuel injector harness so part of the reason why I had to stop is I didn't have uh, the I think that's half inch heat shrink that I needed so I've ordered it now I'm gonna use my fancy new tool to cut some up and that will allow me to go over the joints as needed and then I can also uh, heat shrink the uh, piece at the end
So because I've got um, like some junctions in the wire, uh, I try and do get creative with the uh, heat shrink here. And I don't know if I get it on camera, but it doesn't work. <laughs> it just did not work at all. Um, well, I'll see if... Uh... Oh yeah, so th I think this is it right here. So I start heating it up and it just start the the parts that i cut away just starts curling up instantly and just absolutely useless so i was like well nix that we can't do that um so i just continue on uh with the rest of it getting you know the rest of the joints with some heat drink on them and what i'll likely end up doing is in those cases of like the y right there is i will probably get some um just regular um loom tape uh, it's not sticky stuff it's not electrical tape it does kind of stick to itself but it's a very specific tape for doing loom uh, so I'll probably get some of that stuff just to fill in those gaps and make it all nice and like watertight essentially but yeah so fuel injector harness is pretty much done on those few small things uh, so what I'm gonna do is get cleaned up while figuring out where to go next. Probably the speedometer and probably the uh, fuel sending uh, wires that I'm looking at just trying to figure out I always like to have these things kind of figured out ahead of time um, doesn't always work out but it's nice to know what wires I need going up and where uh, they all need to go so yeah so that's the fuel sent that's the fuel level sending wire there that I was checking out uh, I will need to run that to the back of the car because that's where the fuel cell is um, and I need to understand what's going on with this inverter for the speedometer. still a bunch of circuits that I need to run in the car and so what I'm doing is just throwing some tape on the gauge cluster and I'm gonna start writing out some of the circuits that I still need to run um, just make sure I have everything
since I don't have those terminals, let's get back to some wiring that I can actually do. And so that wiring that I can actually do is I can run all of the uh, heater valve wires over to the passenger side fender. And what I just did is I just pulled all of those wires out of the loom. And the reason why is, as I mentioned earlier, I can run those with the um, coil wires. So I don't need them in loom the entire way. So pulled them out and now I'm going to tape them up before running them with the coil wires. the coils uh, it's very easy for me to just cut those to the correct length and I can continue on from there some kind of wire organization and getting um, some of the wires where they need to be. that I'm uh, working with right now are the front right uh, I, I think turn signal and the park light and the reason why I'm moving these is I can have my entire lighting wiring harness go out through the driver's side firewall I'm also gonna have the horn go out through that side I got the line lock going out through that side so it just kind of I, I, I like the idea of having all of my lighting harness go up the one side of the car. If I recall correctly, this bundle here is like my shift light, my caution light, my warning light, um, 
and might even be my speedometer output wire. I don't remember, uh, but just bundling these up. Absolutely terrible view I did a little bit of cleanup and I'm just kind of um, cleaning up and looking at some of the wires that are going over to the headlight switch So here we go, this is a bit of a better angle for you. And I'm just taping up the wires that are going to the headlight switch, that way they don't um, you know, move around and they have the correct length. And the reason why I need them to be at the correct length is so that I can start wiring up the headlight switch. What I'm grabbing out of the box right now is I'm grabbing all of my uh, Ford female box connectors uh, because as I've mentioned before, I want all of the wires to start at the fuse box, terminate into the devices. Uh, I don't want a bunch of splices. Uh, I don't like it. I have the ability and the tools and the knowledge on how to recrimp all of the ends. So that's what I'm doing. Um, See so yeah, that little box there on uh, the little green box on the floor that is in fact the um, box the female box ends and what I'm doing right now with my multimeter is I'm checking to see what wire is what and the reason why I have to do this is because while I have the wiring schematic for the headlight switch the colors on this replacement switch are different than what came in the stock Ford uh, engine harness so long story short what that means is I need to figure out exactly which wire is the power input wire which wire is like the headlight output wire which is the park lights etc etc so I do that in conjunction uh, with the wiring diagram because um, the wiring diagram does tell me like hey this pin or this pin here is supposed to be this and this goes to here and then I can just confirm and make sure that is correct. Uh, so I'm running into an issue with the headlight switch where the knob does not want to uh, go in, like it, it's just not sticking, the um, actual shaft is pulling back out. And I, I think what ended up happening is I just needed to push it in just a little tiny, tiny bit harder and, and then it, um, it locked and it works perfectly fine now. Yeah, but you can see I was struggling with it for a long time. I almost had, like, I almost went to Google just to be like, hey, is this thing broken? Um, and and kind of figure it out. But nope, it wasn't broken. I just, you know, needed to push on just a little tiny bit harder and then everything started working properly.
I'm doing right now is I am just doing a test connection on that super long wire. And the reason why I'm doing the test connection um, is because I believe I have the, that might be the 18 to 22 connectors out. And I just wanna see if it's gonna work on this wire well. And I don't remember if it does or not, or if I go and I switch out for the uh, bigger size that I do have. Yeah, I think those were the 18 to 22 connectors and I'm switching out for the 14 to 16 connectors because uh, those wires are quite a bit bigger than the uh, 18 to 22. So the 14 to 16 is just gonna work much nicer for what we're doing.
we have it folks we have one completed uh, headlight harness I'm super stoked and we get some puppies we get some 47 there's a brief visit from answer uh, but yeah headlight wi wiring is now done like that headlight switch is wired in theory if I applied power to the car and had all the lights grounded and <laughs> installed they would in theory work hopefully maybe uh, I hope I didn't fuck it up So right now I'm just looking at the other wires just to kind of uh, figure out what they are, where they go, and where they should be going um, while I tie up the headlight switch a little bit more. Yeah, so that beige and blue wire, uh, same ones I mentioned earlier, those are the uh, right side uh, marker lights and right turn signal which i'm now gonna throw up throw through the uh, driver side firewall uh, through panel stud through panel connector not stud so i had previously um put all of the wires going to the front of the engine bay just kind of through a hole in the firewall there and now I'm just pulling them all back out because I need to actually um, put them through one of the HD30 Deutsch connectors that I have. So just spending a little bit of time getting those uh, organized and sorted and kind of uh, put together. I know that my line lock wire, that's the yellow one that's just poking right out there from the bottom, is as long as I need these wires to be, because that goes right to the um, firewall. So I just cut all those wires to length, and what's done is done. Um, you know, uh, hopefully I didn't fuck anything up, and those uh, that's the proper length. I guess we'll see when I go to actually install the uh, main connector, but for now, it's cut, it's done, we're ready to move on. So I figured while I am under here, what I have is I have one more ignition wire uh, that's just kind of hanging down right now, but I need to crimp it and install it into the ignition switch connector. So since I've got all the terminals, I've got my tools all out, you know, there is no better time than right now to do that. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, that's the orange wire in my hand. That's the ignition wire. Uh, so I'm pulling the ignition um, connector out putting that into the proper place putting it back in and then if i recall correctly i go in a, i'm going into the house and i'm grabbing my car keys so that i can actually uh, throw the car keys in the ignition and test to make sure i put it in the right place i think that's what i'm doing but i'm not entirely sure i'm also sure why i didn't yeah that's exactly what i'm doing there we go so grabbing the keys and then just making sure that everything is pinned as as i need it to be like I fully believe that the first time that I was working on this, I pinned everything correctly, I nailed everything. 
but it never hurts to verify. Uh, trust but verify. I trust I did it right, but I'm gonna verify that I did. And I'm gonna verify probably, you know, another time before I fire this whole thing up. But at this point in time, I am pretty happy that I got it done correctly. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move into cleaning up the car. Um, at this point, I've done a bunch of work on the inside. I've done a bunch of electrical work. I've done some, um, I think I knocked some holes in the firewall for the air conditioning bulkhead. So I am going to clean up the car and get it to a place where I'm happy working inside it again. Like there's just shit all over the place. As you know, I ran out of uh, ring terminals while I was working on the dash uh, wiring. So what I'm gonna do right now is go through some of my supplies and just make a list of things that I need to order. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just part of the car building process is ordering supplies. And don't get me wrong, you can do this on the cheaper side um, I've gone the route where I'm buying quality stuff um, you know I could buy some of this stuff off Amazon but I really do not trust most of the stuff on Amazon uh, especially not for building a car uh, the last thing I want to happen is a connector to fail or wire to burn uh, because I cheaped out on that so I, I for certain things I I will not skimp on. I will only buy high quality connectors and wire and electrical components. I mean, that's, that's not to say there's probably tons of stories of people out there who um, have bought stuff from Amazon and haven't had any problems with it, but I, you know, in my opinion, Amazon is now just cheap Chinese crap. Um, most of the stuff that I buy there fails pretty quickly. Uh, unless I buy a name brand thing, which is at name brand prices anyways. So I could just go to my local store and pick that up a lot quicker. Um, so yeah, so most of my electrical stuff is uh, from a few companies now. ProWire, um, Maven speed uh, I got some stuff off race back online I think it was as well um, or for you know the larger cables going with Temco but uh, you know it's really you know it's your build is up to you um, I'm okay spending a few extra dollars uh, I know not everybody has that so do what you can 
And now it is time to do some cleanup. Right, now that we got some things cleaned up uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drop the steering wheel uh, or steering column I should say and to do that I got to undo some of the connectors uh, that are on the steering column and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, put the dash back in pretty loosely and the reason why I want to do that is I need to route some of the wiring uh, specifically um, the um, dash indicator um, dash lights so stuff like as I mentioned before the shift light the warning light the caution light I, I need to route all of those up into the dash so that's why I want the dash back in place because uh, I don't want them just sitting on the floor I want them you know to the dash area and chopped and um, that's what I'm doing
wires that I had to run up there are the uh, high beam indicator, left turn light, right turn light, uh, or right turn indicator wires. And I'm wiring those. Uh, I got a speedometer that has those in them. Um, the alternative is I could have drilled holes in the dash to put them, but I was like, screw it, my speedometer can support that, so I might as well get one that does. And I think it'll be a little bit cleaner and a little bit nicer. Just uh, chopped all the wires down coming through the dash, uh, labeled them, and I kind of figured, well, shit, while I'm here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the radio wires through that I have. I've only got two right now. I've got clock and clock mem, I think. But I'll pull those through and I'll start doing the Deutsch connector for it. Um, at least I'll get something done. So just like I wrote on the dash gauge earlier, um, some of the wiring that I need to run still, I am writing down more circuits that I still need to work on. Yeah, I've got the book right here. And what I wrote out was AC power ground, uh, reverse light power, reverse light to back of car, dome light power, door solenoid driver, door solenoid passenger, uh, sub remote from stereo, e-brake ground cigarette lighter and trunk release so those are all of the things that i still uh, need to run in the car um, that's still true to this day i'm recording this video end of february um, so i do still need to run those as of right now
Okay, so since we're doing some dash related stuff, um, heater controls need to go in the dash. And I have custom uh, heater controls that came from uh, Classic Auto Air. That's them in the bag right there. And I need to get those attached to the um, existing heater controls. I want to use the stock heater controls. I'm kind of weird like that. Um, I like the look of them. They go with the car. So the first thing I'm doing is that is the fan switch. So I pulled the knob off the fan switch and I'm going to um, remove the fan switch from the existing heater controls. Gonna quickly put a few things away that I no longer need and aren't relevant to the heater controls. And we are doing an instructional video. Uh, I'm gonna show how I'm modifying these uh, controls to work with uh, the new stuff that comes and one of the things is the fan switch that I ordered um, isn't the same it's spaced differently so when I try to install it even though the holes are pretty close yeah the the lever actually bottoms out against the housing so I gonna need to fix that somehow to do right now is pull those old um, old cables off and they're held on with these little tabs I don't know exactly what they're called but man they are a pain in the ass to get off of there they were on there good uh, as you can see I struggle with this for a bit I'm doing my best not to break any of the plastic of the heater controls uh, that would be absolutely horrible. So I got very small amount of room to work with. Um, I do eventually get it off though. And so that little piece there um, is kind of what I need. Uh, the only problem is on the, fo or the Ford controls, that little plastic piece is built into the um, cable. So I need to figure something out for that. Well, that is it for this video. Uh, as always, if you stuck around this long, I'd like to thank you for viewing and we'll catch you in the next one.